she will be talking on capturing and learning from our diverse water stories. Chavi Mathu works as a project lead and curator at the Living Waters Museum in the Pune chapter that is presently embedded at the Center for Water Research at the Indian Institute for Science, Education and Research, Aizur, Pune. She did her PhD at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore and worked for a few years at the National Institutes of Health in USA. With her background in science and ongoing work in museum and the education sector, she is exploring ways and means to bridge the science and the society. I welcome you again, ma'am. Over to you. Does that 
or the, what it is printing in it, highlight. So let's start with the first one. This is really it's a water ATM at my house, near my house in Mysore. So what water value do you think this image uh, emphasizes? Or uh, social. Okay. Any other economic? Anything else? Uh, technology for for what? So we, we go with economic and social among in terms of the values and we just move forward. Uh, which what the value do you think that emphasizes? Environment. Environment. And what if I zoomed out uh, and I took a picture, it's a fountain, right? So what if I zoomed out and took a picture of the entire fountain? Uh, and then uh, yeah, why social? Uh, if it's a public fountain, uh, you would often also see people around it if you zoomed out and not just uh, sometimes you all just work. So uh, this is a uh, this is uh, something that is from Mumbai Water Analysis. Uh, that is another. Uh, I'll talk about this exhibition towards the end. But yeah, this uh, maybe can read quickly. Social and cultural. Yeah? And also talks about the transformation that this uh, spout had a certain social uh, value associated with it at a certain point in time and then it was transformed uh, and something was built around it to give it more of a culture. So it's also a transformation that this story uh, talks about. Uh, what about this one?
So in Pune there are lots of pyaars and there's a story about that also. But in uh, sorry in Mumbai, but in Pune there are very few pyaars, and uh, the ones that are there are mostly defunct. They don't work, and it is in the same place that today there is also she find the pan puri there. So the the same philosophy. So the uh, pyaar was set up by the Britishers. Uh, you know they okay. now there's a pandu there so the story talks about transformation and asks a question that what is what are the things about the space that has seen philanthropic effects towards water over you know even after so many centuries um, then uh, this is a part of another story uh, where prajakta uh, and they were looking at the floods in pune Uh, so starting with the 1961 flood, which was actually because of Panchayat Dam breaking, to today's flood, which is more because of urban development and other those kind of problems. But when they were examining these images, uh, they 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 said if you just look at the trail of destruction, you can immediately see the amount of plastic and the things that we are putting into our rivers, and it's it's, it's immediately evident. So these are just parts of stories, and uh, you know that uh, the uh, sort of. Uh, Illustrate some of the transformations that these people talk about, um, and then we also look at um, uh, the waters, uh, for example, in Pune from multiple perspectives. So, uh, so one of the stories. So, uh, that when I moved to Pune, I always thought of the hills of Pune and how, how I could go trekking, etc. Right? It was only when I was traveling in Pune that I realized that there are bridges and you know there are rivers there. And this is true for many people who uh, come to Pune and you know live there for a short time or something. And, uh, not everybody knows that there are almost five rivers that flow through Pune. Uh, and there's also a lot of work on the ground which happens uh, for the rivers. So, um, so we did a few stories about the rivers, and uh, one of them talked about uh, the traditional uh, wisdom. Uh, Of of the uh, communities from the micro to time. So these are stories which about the rustic deities of the uh, uh, communities that were present during the micro to times, and they would move from uh, so the pastoral communities would move from hills to the water based on the season, and uh, they they with them they carried their rustic deities. So as they moved across. uh they would set up uh their deities at certain places which were markers for uh having abundant food and water supply in those areas and so a lot of those uh deities are present today and uh then there were uh, communities which lived closer to the to the rivers which were the fishing communities like the kolis and the bhois And uh, there, uh, this is uh, their rustic deity called Sati Yasra. Uh, and uh, so, in this one, at the confluence of uh, Mula and Mutha, which are two major rivers in in Pune, you see that the pastoralists uh, uh, deity, which is Matoba and Sati Yasra, are present at at the same space. Now, uh, presence of Sati Yasra meant that the river, the river there, had calmer waters, deeper trust. Was good for fishing, right? And there are a lot, uh, there are a lot of these sati asra present uh, in this in this region, in the Mula River around Kinjewadi, where today there is like a huge IT presence. So there's a lot of traditional wisdom with respect to the ecological uh, uh, understanding of a of a space of a river, uh, which is present in these stories, but may may not feature in in the way we plan you know our cities or uh, city so this is one story about that um, and then this is uh, this is a story about another river that is ramnadi here which meets mula also in pune um, and uh, it, this then that story talks about the uh, you know to take a walk along ramnadi what are the different features but this one lake which was built by the british to provide potable water uh, to their troops And uh, today, uh, around around this region, there has been a lot of development, which has led to release of a lot of untreated sewage and everything into Ram Nadi and into Pashan Lake. Uh, 
so that this uh, like uh, in, in dry periods this lake is just totally covered with water hyacinth and uh, so there are some so in in the story they have used more contemporary methods to look at the ecological status of of the uh, of the lake and uh, right um, then uh, this is another uh, uh, story in which um, this group Jeevit Nadi they uh, they looked at the they found a region at the confluence of Ram Nadi and Mula here which uh, they uh, they thought was quite undisturbed and quite pristine so they collaborated with the life sciences uh, company and uh, explored the uh, freshwater invertebrate population in this area and uh, they came up with a report where they uh, found several invertebrate populations and some of them as markers for uh, good quality uh, uh, water <coughs> in that area and uh, just to uh, just to remind you this entire area receives a lot of uh, you know waste from Hindiwadi this receives a lot of waste from uh, uh, Bani Pashan area that it is called so even then there were some areas here which which showed that the waters were cleaner than some of the other areas. So we used this uh, report and uh, we, we developed a children's story about, children's story book around that, which uh, it's on display, you can browse through it, um, to bring these uh, notions to you know, younger, younger students and then uh, some bookmarks and this kind of things. So this was another story which uh, talked about the Mutha river which is also extremely polluted. It is, you can see the embankments along the river, it's uh, um, uh, in, in, in the dry season, uh, like it's, it's like a Nala now. And this. But, but it, uh, it is along uh, the Mula Mutha confluence where Pune as a city, as a, um, as a hamlet started developing and then you know, it started coming. So, it has a lot of cultural uh, value associated with it, but the rivers are uh, are, are really really polluted. Um, so this person he uh, he would go to the river and uh, what he found. So he looked at he was trying to look at what kind of can. So this is a very polluted river. Can it still support livelihoods? And uh, when he went there, one of the things that he found were these uh, worm collectors. Uh, who uh, go into the river, collect worms, and sell it to the uh, aquarium across the across the city. And at the uh, Sangam, you have uh, people who engage in more culture-related uh, livelihoods. Uh, so, like these people, uh, they help to take the asti reception. And this is a person who's a coin collector. So every day or every two days, he comes to the river, and the coins that people throw he is actually collecting. So the certain certain sense these, li these livelihoods are even at the in this state of the river the livelihoods are some sort of livelihoods are still being maintained even as we don't. So um, and then like the, like I mentioned there there is uh, there are there are not only issues at the floods uh, in uh, in Pune the older ones and the uh, the 1961 and then uh, the flood the more happening the urban flood which are, which are happening now. Um, so this uh, this story looks at the rivers but from a more uh, design perspective where you are walking where they have created so this is also here in the display somewhere where it's, it's a multi-fold card where uh, they have uh, uh, shown how the river uh, progresses from where it's on the Sayadris where it starts to uh, where they reach the Bhima river and uh, then what are the heritage spaces around it, what are the cultural spaces around it, what are the ecological, uh, ecologically important uh, uh, factors around it. So, it's, so, and, uh, it, so these, are, these are the designers uh, uh, who, have, who have worked on this along with some of the other partners. Um, so this is uh, one place where, uh, you know, uh, we have used GIS uh, to, so basically Pallavi, uh, she did a master where she uh, looked at the water supply system during Peshwa's uh, period 
and uh, she used uh, she used GIS to map how the uh, aqueducts and how the system was at that point in time. So if you have your phone and if you have this on open on your phone, you could walk around the city uh, that uh, in terms of water supply as it was in the 18th century. And she's also done uh, one uh, uh, illustration which is here which uh, tells you what all, where, where all the wells were. And today if you go there, there are very, very few elements of these that you will find and you will also find because there, if you see the story a bit more, also how these elements have been adapted now into the, uh, into the structures that have come up. So um, that's also like an interesting thing to see. Um, so I was, I'm not about the rivers, but there are you know, some stories about groundwater as well. So uh, Manas, uh, he did his PhD and some of the major work that he did was with the barrels in uh, uh, in the Pune district. So, um, so barrels are basically step ponds and uh, they, many of them, uh, so they would be found outside a village and would be used by the villagers as well as by uh, uh, well, for the travellers to stop and, and drink water. And, um, so many, uh, many of them had these uh, spaces where they would keep their food. Not all the deities are now relevant, but you know, these uh, these spaces still remain. Uh, some of them are associated with uh, temples, not all of them. Um, and today, uh, one sees that the community uh, real, around that area realizes, you know, uh, uh, sort of again comes back to these spaces and uh, try to revive these structures and interacts with them not only in terms of a water resource, but also culturally. Um, if not as temple, like uh, they, you know, they would in the Bali they had they would come here for beer. So they they are sort of interacting with them and trying to revive them. By, so this is uh, some uh, one event where they were trying to be silt it and clean it. Um, and then um, so uh, a lot of construction that is happening in Pune right now is leading to destruction of a quite. Uh, a quite a lot of acrid falls and that is a concern and which is being raised by uh, people and uh, mm -hmm. as a, uh, so it, it, in, like in addition to just raising concerns there are also people whose higher housing societies are in these regions, they are uh, putting in their efforts to uh, harvest rainwater and use it for their own purpose or for recharging groundwater. So there's a lot of so uh, that this story talks about that. Um, so basically a lot of the work that I talked about is uh, something that we put together as an exhibition uh, called Pranyachi Pani. Uh, it is available online. Uh, if you go to the site, you can read these stories at length and sort of try and uh, understand what values, what systems and what is the, how are people looking at water from you know, all these perspectives. Um, and uh, so this is something, so uh, we are a very small team. I am there in Pune, another person is in Kolkata, another person is in jo uh, uh, Ahmedabad. Uh, so we are a very small team and what we do is we work with partners. So for example, Aslam here has been a partner. Uh, and so uh, that so that is one of uh, the major, and that is what you see here also. So this is uh, a lot of academics, PhD students, um, water experts, architects, urban planners, photographers. So there's a whole uh, you know large set of people, large kind, kind, kinds of people doing different kinds of work that. We interact with and the you know the museum is able to bring together, and uh, they may not always work individually. Sometimes we put them together, uh, you know, uh, like a PhD student with a uh, somebody who understands media better. So so we do that, and that is how we sort of you know uh, that becomes a very important part of the museum uh, work. Um, there is different forms of research in the world. Uh, this is work which was done for uh, during uh, confluence uh, exhibition uh, by uh, Aslam where 
he has uh, gone and spoken with uh, the Rishi community in Mumbai and he has done uh, uh, not just with us but uh, other stories also uh, uh, about Rishi. Similarly, uh, like I said, Swapna went out for her research. So there's a, a lot of primary research that happens. Uh, there's also secondary research. So one of the stories that I did, uh, it, it consists of the primary research done by somebody else. So there's a lot of primary, secondary research that is uh, that is that is done. Um, and then uh, we work with whoever we are working with. We work with them to uh, tell these stories in a way which you know, uh, uh, which is visually uh, engaging, which in, where you know the visuals can can tell the story as much, or the art aspect of it can tell the story uh, as much. So this is uh, a story by uh, one of the students. He uh, when we launched Pranayacha uh exhibition, uh, he uh, was actually in the dance too. I'll come to that. But, and then uh, we had a water and art performing arts event and then after the event he came back to me and said, Shavi, I don't see any uh, anything, I, I live in uh, I live in the Ganjam district, I don't see any story from there, uh, but it could be interesting, uh, I, let me know what you want and you know uh, we can maybe do a story together. And then he went back home and I worked with him a little bit and what we realized is that he lives uh, uh, near the Vishikulya uh, uh, story and uh, uh, so he, uh, as kids they were not allowed to go into this estuary because there had been drowning incidents but because he was stuck in COVID he had gone out and he had seen all these villages next to his and now uh, he was uh, he told a story which started at a fort here which was a big maritime fort and the, for the French and for the British and then it was abandoned. So the whole historical aspect to it and then he moves forward and talks about the uh, fishing communities and the livelihoods there and then he moves further and that is where the olive ridley nest, uh, turtle nesting sites are there. So, the, so, uh, so this, is a, this, is a, this story sort of encompasses a lot of uh, these uh, you know, uh, elements and bring them together. It's a very interesting story to, to go through. And also to sort of work with when he was developing it. Um, and then we engage different groups. So uh, I'll talk about this project a bit later. Uh, but uh, I, I, I was uh, a part of a larger uh, group discussion for this uh, project where uh, we had received a grant and there was another person who had received a grant. And she was from, uh, she's a teacher at uh, Shahid School in Raipur. And she said, if you, if you, and the, uh, so what we're doing there is we're making these water classrooms. I talked about that. But she said, if you want to talk about water, and uh, I have a student in my school who uh, faced caste-based discrimination to the extent that she almost landed in jail. And this is a 13-year-old kid that we're talking about. So we uh, uh, looked back and we worked with her to, you know, tell her story and bring that to the front. And uh, later I'll show, but we, we uh, take the story to the students in Pune. And uh, it turns out to be very impactful. Um, so, um, yeah, so other than doing visual work, we also work with performing arts, where, um, so for example, this was an initiative started by one of my uh, colleagues in Kolkata, where when everybody was stuck inside, we told people just express water through your art and, and send us something. So the first season where we received some 60, 70 entries. The second season onwards we started curating it a little bit more. So uh, here, um, so, uh, so that's one of the initiatives. And then uh, here we uh, had Nishad who is a classical, a funny classical singer and Saurav Muni who is a, uh, a folk singer. Uh, come and talk about how they express water in their art. So this was an online conversation. And then once we, we could do physical events, during the uh, launch of Punyachapani, we had students and, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the way from 8 years old to 50 year olds come and uh, uh, they did theatre, classical dance, contemporary dance, um, poara, 
as well as I don't know, find their expressions through water. So, um, and then why do we do this? Uh, so, uh, when when I when we put put the thing out that you know we are we will be launching this and we will be doing certain events. So during the launch of the exhibition, we uh, it was a week of uh, panel discussions where we uh, had uh, experts from different fields come and it was an open discussion. A lot of citizen groups and students came for for those discussions. Then we had movie screenings and the performing arts and. And I said, you know, I can't do this alone. So I, I need, uh, you know, who who's, who can come and support. And there was a huge response from the students, and uh, some are, and some of them even helped us to translate content to Marathi. So Punyachi Pani was a uh, bilingual uh, one. And when when they are, uh, you know, reading these and uh, talking about these, there are a lot of conversations, and uh, so it's. Uh, so I, it's instead of just telling them about water, the awareness sort of builds as we are a part of the process that is happening. Um, and so, like I said, so it's also a space for uh, uh, you know for them to uh, talk and have conversations. And then uh, we just we create. So these are waterworks with uh, Jirtha DC. So we we create more uh, more opportunities and uh, bring more people give them more another reason to go and actually see their water bodies. Um, and uh, then uh, while the Punyachapani uh, program like uh, exhibition was going on, we were working with it, uh, we were also thinking about how do we take this content and uh, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. 10, 10 to 12 minutes. Chale. Chale. Uh, so how uh, can so far we uh, uh, content wise we have uh, dealt with undergraduate so a lot of the uh, content was also initial content was done by NI, NID graduates so undergraduate now we have had a lot of content related interactions can we start talking to school students as well um, so. Uh, we applied for a, uh, so we basically got a grant from this project called Transforming Education for Sustainable Futures, which is uh, anchored at Indian Institute of Human Settlements, uh, where we are now trying to develop water classrooms for middle school students. So, uh, so over the last few months, we did that. Um, and the idea was to um, make these visually rich. Uh, and or rather not as text heavy, uh, make them interactive, uh, inquiry based, student centered, and do a lot of this through art. Um, and as you can see, they are, uh, they are quite interdisciplinary. And co-creation was a, again a very important factor in 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 this whole thing. So we have we obviously I cannot sit and write about everything because I am not an expert in everything here. So that meant bringing in a lot of experts. But not just the experts, this time we also brought in teachers uh, who teach these classes to, uh, uh, so rather than just the experts telling the teacher, the teachers played a very active role in how, you know, we should we should build this, where is the flexibility required, what are the constraints. So there is a lot of input that we got from the practitioners. Um, and uh, I supported at a certain point even the students sort of, you know, uh, uh, got, uh, became a part of this co-creation. I'll come to that. Uh, very quickly I'll run through. So, so we, we, as a pilot, we did this with about 30 students from four different schools with a certain diversity uh, that we tried to get in. And like I said, there were teachers who were present and uh, who also, um, Sort of were evaluating as as the process was going on, and uh, you know they would sit with us on each on all of, a lot of these Sundays and uh, tell us what can we do better and, and those things. Um, so just a few examples. When before these students were coming in, we told them draw water cycle, tell us what groundwater looks like. So this is an example from a student, and a lot of these were very similar. 
So this is basically from the book. Just a book, uh, how the book shows very very similar. Some of them have done different things, but this is quite standard. And then here, of course, the word is wrong, but you want to say precipitation. But very simple, the simple single direction, you know, um, drawings of of the water side. So uh, then, uh, well, there was one class where we asked them in the beginning. Uh, tell us where does your water come from? If you want to go drink a glass of water, where does it come from? So I'll. Uh, so the same student who understands lakes, water, um, lakes, aquifers, you know, groundwater, precipitation, understands that they could not uh, place. In the, if he was just told, just tell me where does your water come. From? So um, and then I, I asked him, okay, what happened here? So he said, I couldn't understand uh, whatever what I had to really do. Uh, we also told him, let's try to trace it from rain over rains to your home. He said, I didn't understand what to do, so I just copied the kid who was, you know, my friend. Okay, fair enough, right? And um, there, when they think of where does my water come from, it goes to wastewater treatment plants, and this is true for many of them. Right? Uh, but then we had the whole session where we walked them through using the content that we had created for the exhibition. Otherwise, also where we walked them through the rains, saya, the rivers, rivers, groundwater, etc. And then this kid, this is the same kid, right? And then the 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 thinking just got more more complex right there. And his was actually very different from the rest of them. So that was also very interesting that uh, after they went through that session. It's not like the responses that we were getting were standard. Each student had taken something that they understood more or less, and uh, he very interestingly also brought in uh, Pune Municipal Corporations. He brought in the governance angle, and you know, and this image uh, suddenly made my life easier because later on I had to go to a topic of water and governance, and I was thinking for centralized government, what image should I put? And then I, I just use it. here the student just became a part of that co-creation for that lesson. So it was very very exciting. This is one of the examples. Um, and this is uh, so basically we took the images and we uh, you know uh, labeled everything what was coming. And you can see that initially the focus was so much on pipes and taps and everything else was a bit in the background. And then after the session it it all comes. Uh, more, more, in, uh, you know, becomes uh, more accurate. Uh, then we uh, uh, spoke to students about water rights, access, poverty, caste, those things. A little bit of, uh, you know, uh, using some of those images, talking. And then we played this privilege game with them. Um, I'm sure many of you must be aware. We created characters. Each group was a certain character and uh, uh, had a certain lifestyle. And this, uh, depending on, we ask them very simple water related question. Do you have enough water to take a bath every day like that? Very simple one line question. And if they could do it, they would move forward. And if they couldn't, they would just stay. And uh, so basically the student, the characters which are more privileged sort of, you know, move uh, forward. And in physical space, students would see the gap. Uh, and some of them were surprised, oh, this happens in the same city. So there are these different narratives which come out during during the um, conversation, and then we ask them to just write what are the factors do you think that make them go. Um, some students move ahead or stay back, and uh, uh, they they bring up uh, you know in the in the in, in their what they write they bring up all all these factors, uh, including caste, social status, religion. Um, Habitat, and this was interesting because before having the session, we asked the teachers, you know, we want to have the sessions. What do you think will students be comfortable? And teachers were teachers were uncomfortable because for them, if you tell students something, they will students will go back repeat it in in their house, and the parents then they have to answer to the parents. So uh, uh, they were not entirely comfortable for having discussions around caste. And, however, students on the other hand, during this were extremely comfortable, uh, and uh, that discomfort was not sensed, which was also the feedback from the teachers. So it was not just me. Um, so this 
So this is another example. Um, and this is, like I said, so the water cycle is that nice, you know, one, one direction thing. Um, but after like uh, a lot of these sessions, some 16, 17 sessions, we told them, try this again. Draw something that you, know, you learned from it. And uh, so uh, this student, uh, so this is not his entire thing, he has done more, I have not put all of that. But this student now brought in waste water which he thinks is a part of the water cycle. And this student tried to show how groundwater is also a part of my water cycle. So like that, there is a, the complexity of the thinking sort of you know, evolves. Uh, the, and like that's what we could, we could see from, from this. So, uh, so uh, about that, I, I'll stop about that. that uh, that's an ongoing work and it's still analyzing process. Um, but other than that, we also do, you know, these different uh, events and outreach uh, work. And this particular series is targeted for the teachers where uh, when we spoke to the teachers uh, and we talked to them about sustainability, they usually talk about solar panels and, uh, you know, um, uh, wind farms and all. So, to, uh, we, uh, we thought we could do something where they get a more... Uh, holistic picture about sustainability, so not just them, even even us, because in this entire process we are also learning. Um, so that's uh, another uh, thing that we do. So this is sort of a, um, uh, what, what we do as a as a museum. Um, and this exhibition actually that I put confluence. Uh, this is an exhibition about Mumbai's water. So if you're interested. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's a fantastic exhibition, so um, you can go back and look at it. Um, and uh, so uh, we also have water seekers fellowships that uh, students can apply to, uh, where uh, you work on policy related questions plus visual stories in that term. So this is on the social media on the breakfast part. And then uh, workshop, this one is in Jodhpur, so that's another exhibition that is coming up. I move on, I'm finished. So Sara is the, is the founder, Bhargav is leading the, an upcoming uh, exhibition on the old city of Jodhpur. Uh, the water is there and Sukrit has started the Kolkata. And he's been doing the work in Kolkata, he's now working on the urban scapes. So recently, uh, for the last couple of years, he's been focusing a bit on the urban scapes. And these are all the undergrads uh, who, jo who joined in that group of, you know, we'll organize events and then also, you know, join me in the efforts in the water classrooms and they've been helping me. And uh, these are the people who are, have been funding these initiatives, the museum and the SF and that's how we can find us, mail us. so much for this. Yeah, so that we can, when we finish, people can walk, you, walk. You can walk, you can, at these and bookmarks, you can take them home. So, I have enough books. So. so, also, just before we did the lecture, Chavi did a special class for our 613 for the first year, where we did this game on uh, common pool resources on fishing, many of you may be aware, and we had a lovely one and a half hour where she facilitated this game for the class 613, Environment and Ecology, where everybody became fishermen and fisherwomen. And uh, I think we generally ended up being unsustainable <laughs> because uh, there was a pond with 23 fish and by the time the game was over, there were not more than 7 fish in any of the ponds. Some rich fishermen made a lot of money and some poor fishermen <laughs> made, also made some money. Uh, but so much, uh, thank you so much, Shavi. We'll open, the, uh, open this up for discussion and questions. And as always, uh, we'll ask our students uh, to please take the first shot at our speaker. Please feel free to ask, to comment, to suggest, and whatever else. So, yeah, shall we call yours? <clears throat> we'll come to the professors as well, and so they'll have lots of questions to ask. Right at the back. Come, 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 come. This mic won't work as a back anyway. 
Myself, Hari Prasad. I am a PhD student at Sitara. So my question, actually, while while I plan to start asking the first question, I was writing down. So you have mentioned the. Hi Chavi, my name is Shashank, I am a PhD student at Sitara. I am I'm actually curious to know about the kind of responses that you, you received to Punya Chapani. So as in, how did people relate to these stories? Uh, did it evoke some kind of memories? Or did they think about, uh, were they able to relate to the unsustainable lifestyles that have come up? Or, uh, also, what you had in mind, the team had in mind while curating these stories, what were some of these objectives? Okay. Uh, so, I'll start with some of the things. So, the person who designed or who was largely responsible for the design had uh, 
studied in COEP. And uh, so he was there in Pune for like a few years. And uh, so his response, because he went through all the stories, was like, I had no idea about all this. So, um, and that is, has been sort of a, um, uh, so a lot of the, the new people who are, who are moving to Pune uh, do not understand, including myself, because even I didn't know. So do not have that relationship or that understanding of what is it that Pune is what is doing. Um, now, um, so that was one instance. Another was the student who was uh, uh, doing the translations for us. And uh, he, uh, so he talked about the, I think he was talking about the Pantois that are, that are there, which for him was a, again a very fascinating uh, experience. That he, he had no idea. And Pantois is something you can just walk out and you can actually <coughs> see. Like uh, they are everywhere. But uh, you don't see them, you don't notice them because uh, it doesn't register. Right. So, uh, so that that's another uh, thing that immediately uh, comes to mind. Um, then, um, so when uh, the story that we did for floods, right? There we didn't just talk about floods, but also. Uh, the story, the, the way it goes is how we live, where we live, and then the flood. So there the where we live, I think that we uh, made, made an even animation where it shows the, you know, how the water from the rains comes and through say Adani's river, groundwater. And that was used in the session with the students where we talked about where does my water come from. And we sort of saw an example of what happened there. These are few examples that immediately come to mind. In terms of the objectives, it's so um, it's like a research project. Right? You start with something. We started with okay, let's um, you know uh, find people who work with water in Pune uh, and see what kind of work they do, what what challenges, what opportunities, etc., and, and see where we can where do we see these stories. Uh, so, so initially, uh, uh, it was very, uh, so initially of course this was lag phase, just like in research. Yeah. And, and then we started meeting, so like I met Manas who had done the works on traditional water systems for Jeevip Nadi. And then we started building these partnerships and uh, we started understanding what people we have, uh, what kind of stories can be told. So, uh, so then from a large... Uh, so we have some six, seven galleries. Right? So, uh, so uh, we keep those galleries in mind. I mean, we don't really keep the we, we keep the interdisciplinarity in mind, and then see who are the people that we can reach out to. Who, are, which of them can tell those stories? What kind of stories are they have to be visual because that is very important for the museum. Um, and uh, so, at some point, it also becomes a uh, who are we partnering with? Uh, so, however, uh, when we sent out the call, we talked about heritage, history, livelihood, ecology, um, and then based on that, we did it. However, uh, when I was doing my story, which was to trace uh, the, the water in Pune, when I was doing that study, what uh, it eventually ended up being, if you go to the website, is that it, it became like a mother story. So it goes all the way from 3000 BC to today. And then the way it goes, uh, all the other stories can branch out from it. So it sort of happened as a process. And then you know, it was like a research project. You start with something and then you sort of build on. Uh, so people that you partner with, how you're telling, how you're telling your stories, who's telling the stories a lot of those things sort of and then how can you design it so even the design factor plays a role so you can uh, in how many ways can you access so then uh, website design for it also sort of plays a role in how you get something to so. 
and going to that water body uh, becomes a part of uh, you know weather features in your natural. However, I was I was also told that um, there are some uh, Marathi phrases which arise from the river, which are uh, in a generation up from you. Uh, but people uh, in Pune would go uh, there only for the gala, one of the gala, what is that boating, uh, I forget the name. Regatta. Ha, ha, regatta. So that is something that had come up, but uh, otherwise uh, interaction with it was mostly through me. Uh, can I begin? <coughs> yeah. I'm a Punekar from 1989. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's okay, my wife is. <laughs> so, one explanation could be except Ram Nadi, all four Nadis are completely dammed, not a single drop of water. There is so much of an impounding capacity of stream that not a single drop of water would come down. So, except Ram Nadi, all rivers will have only. Uh, that would be and this happened way back in I believe late 70s the last drop of water came to Pune. That may be the reason. So they are, they are definitely seasonal. Uh, when it's not raining, the dams are not open, you will not go. Even now there is a whole discussion and whole uh, between the civil society and the government about the riverfront development. Because now it's come down to, uh, do you want to beautify this or do you want to actually feed this? Where do you want to put your money? Do you want to feed this sewage that and stuff? So, uh, my, uh, uh, so thanks <laughs> for that. Uh, because I have interacted with some of the people who are so active with the rivers. So, uh, for me it's a little bit hard to <laughs> sort of answer that question to me. So, yeah, thanks. Himali, then we we'll come to Charu, Sugod, and then they Hello, I am Himali, I am a PhD student at Sitara. So I found this exercise interesting that you first elicit the initial understanding of the students, then they go through a course, and afterwards the impact of the course is understood. So, and you mentioned that uh, you asked the question where does your water come from to get the understanding? So I wanted to know could you elaborate on this process? Like apart from this question, how how does this process go about? Like you ask the question and then we do it. Uh, so only for that question, or do you want to know for the whole thing? Uh, any anything. I want to know how how the students are guided to draw, or is there only this one open-ended question, or are there some guiding probes in between? Uh, so um, so where does my water come from? Is just uh, session two. Sorry. <laughs> so where does my water come from is only uh, a session to one session is about 60 to 70 minutes. Right? And uh, then, uh, uh, okay, so one thing is that the, the way we have tried to uh, work with these is a lot of interaction. So we uh, try to make an inquiry based in sense to me let students ask and answer a lot of questions. So uh, this was actually uh, like, so after this, after we asked them this and they do whatever they wanted to draw, uh, we had a whole one hour session on where does water, what are the inflows of water from the rain to your uh, tap. Right? And then there was another session on waste water for example. And then uh, all the other things that come in the you know, uh, cultural practices, values, or gender, uh, all of this. So uh, they go, they went through this entire process. So, uh, so I, I don't know if, if I'm so upset. I wanted to know, like, you showed about the change in their understanding through the two uh, diagrams. Like the, huh. So that is between one hour of interaction. One hour of interaction and uh, uh, visual uh, thing, uh, content that we had created. Okay, Samit, Samit, go ahead. Hello, uh, I am a PhD student at Satara, Samit. 
so uh, you said that it's like a research project and then you also interview people and stuff. Which part? Uh, uh, like the process. Process, yeah, process of creating the story. And uh -huh. so I'm guessing that not all stories that you get from the field are featured in on your site or yeah. so then what is the process of filtering out I mean, how, how do you decide which stories to feature which ones to not so that's so
So, uh, what I could see throughout the presentation, I mean, uh, I, I missed around 5-7 minutes of the initial part, but uh, the water storage aspect and second is about rainwater harvesting aspect and the difficulties, advantages and all that aspect we didn't figure out uh, in any of the stories. So, maybe if that we can also add up or pick up uh, at some point of time. So, we do have... Um so we do have uh, stories on uh, like around Piaos, on Parabs, uh, on no, those days. are Those are the traditional ones, like uh, what happens at, at the... Uh, yeah, so actually the story on Piao, uh, uh, it starts with Piaos from the British time, but comes down to what it is today, how this, and not just the, um, not just the Pankoi, but it also talks about the other kinds of uh, water structure, but that story, for example, focuses on the philanthropic aspect of it. But the uh, how these uh, panpoys also are evolving into something. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, I, what and what I'm uh, suggesting is uh, at individual household level water storage from the rains, and then storing it in some kind of containers or something like that. So a more rainwater. So yeah, sure. Rainwater storage as well as uh, harvesting into the ground. So the museum doesn't uh, focus on the technical aspects, but if it could be told as a story of transformation, like some of it that comes up in the uh, part of it that comes up in the flood story, uh, where so one, so one, story, society, yeah, one, uh, one story I can suggest is that uh, farmers, after having uh, ponding this rainwater, they are able to take one extra crop uh, in the you know uh, the, uh, post. Uh, so if any of your student goes to the field and he has, he or she, they, they have this narrative uh, that can tell the story uh, in 10 to 20 visuals and 1500 words, please send it. <laughs> and we will be happy to, you know, uh, so that's, and I tell to anyone, a lot of you are going to go in the fields and talk to people and see things. Um, this is the museum, say the kind of stories we are telling him. Is there aspects so that may not feature in, uh, in on the technical side, I, I don't know, doesn't feature in your uh, regular report, but could be a visual story like... Uh, uh, so on, on, on the technical front, we are trying to work out low cost uh, uh, solutions for the storage things, but uh, the idea that uh, this water uh, can be productively utilized, that uh, can really go well in the students. The, the kind of interactions that we have. And I think it will also be interesting for a story like that, it would also be interesting to see that at a social level, uh, I mean, I'm just sort of trying to curate it right now in a, in a way that would go for the reason. How is the, the critic of this? With the water farms huh. or water ponds in Maharashtra huh. are seen as new way of water yeah. colonizing. There is a social aspect, negative. Huh. That water farms or water uh, water uh, water ponds or farm ponds, to be precise, are seen as a new way of dominant families in the village to corner the water. Okay, so if you are interested, this kind of uh, negative uh, social implications of new technology, they, this is an example. And one person sitting in Pune can write well about this. Uh, uh, issue or kai of water. So, I'll look it if up. you have want this <laughs> and this negative change, issue is a person. So yeah, it's about the story and uh, who affects. So, for like, example, we have, I remember we have a story about pullums, which are these water storage structures in a uh, more traditional in uh, Tamil Nadu. So, uh, so, so there are so there's a lot of work which I did not cover because it's not. What I can speak about is like, yeah, I, <laughs> I can speak more inside uh, uh, if, if you have a long back Priya Sangwan photograph about uh, some traditional water from the roof being, you know. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I was about to. Yeah. So it would be interesting. So maybe that if we can uh, share it too. Yes. So it would be interesting to see how, uh, in a space, for example, how did rainwater harvesting has evolved over time. Yeah. So even that is a very interesting story and how. How does it affect people? Uh, is it done at a, at a uh, single house level to go you know, a community level? So the 
story of that transformation will be very interesting to sort of look at. So if there are people, uh, you know, there, just reach out <laughs> to us. We work together, but we have very different uh, perspectives to look at water, oh, as you can see. <laughs> uh, I'm Subodh Walwe, I teach uh, here. You know, your two words sort of intrigue me. The name of the museum is Living Water. Hmm. And those five values, environmental, health, social, cultural, ah. economic, ah. and governance. Ah. Why not political? Why not political? Because there is a huge debate how the governance term basically pushed by international financial institutions has depoliticized water and everything. So in the process, your whole narrative and your whole discourse is the danger that it will get depoliticized because you are not talking about political and you are talking about governance. Whereas living especially in city like Pune, you must talk about political. Why? Because half of the population in Pune does not get 45 liters of water per LPCD. In Mumbai, half of the population stays in this and half of half that does not get even 10 liters per LCD. So this is our reality of cities. And if you bring in political, you will be forced to do that. Otherwise, what will happen? There is a danger, and I can see that happening. And you take this uh, topics which you are given. It will become a middle class heritage, aesthetic thing, lacking a political reality of a city where you are staying. Okay? It, it, see that there is no water discrimination. There is no water access problem. Half of the city of Pune does not have water access to adequate basic minimum water of uh, 80 LPCD is considered as the basic scientifically basic LPCD. Half of the Pune of city doesn't get that. And it's not that what I am trying to say. I think Aslam is well connected with Sudharak Oway. He has a fantastic exhibition and Aslam on how water is denied to citizens of Mumbai. Okay, so that I am not able to look in there. So I think that is that has to be come. That has if you are sitting in Pune, this kind of water discrimination, water denial, has to be in living water. Uh, so maybe a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, this does talk of water access. I mean. I, this is also being updated with this here. So it does talk of water and access. And uh, so the fact about LPCD and those kind of things, we, we spoke to students about that when we spoke to them about water I use, um, where we talked about how much water do you use, how much water do you think uh, a farmer gets. Uh, if a farmer gets a certain amount of water, what are the things the farmer uses it for versus what you use it for. Um, then uh, how is the water going into agriculture different from the what LPCD that? So we talk about a, a lot of uh, these things during the interactive. Um, so you you may not um, see them explicitly on the exhibition itself, but uh, uh, when we talk about when we do the interactive sessions, the, a lot of this the content leads into that. Similarly, uh, when we did the uh, we had Minas uh, who did the Pani Party uh, uh, story book, uh, it's here. And uh, we had her in one of the talks and uh, the, that was the talk was to understand how do you take go from a story book to, you know, real issues. And uh, even uh, like in her process where, and the story book was created with the name of the So even in her process she starts with the book. She talks about this boy who finds magic in water. Like why is water magic? Magical, simple thing. And then goes into the questions of who is getting how much water, what is the allowance, what are the people who are not getting. So a lot of those things are uh, done in an interactive, uh, especially with, with kids. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like if you, if you can talk to them and actually also listen and respond to them, that works 
better than giving them you know, something that says so many FPCB. Uh, in fact, very initially when I had put, put down that they were going to do something in Pune, one of the kids came and said, you know, I want to look at the issue that I live, uh, I don't know, downhill and this person lives uphill and I get water and they don't get water. And uh, so those conversations happen, um, but not as a yeah. word political maybe, but they're not left out, I would say. Uh, I, I agree with her. Uh, we basically in consequence the Mumbai uh, event which happened two years back, uh, Dharam Shedar was part of the exhibition and his narrative was also part of that. Uh, with, uh, even Nikhil Anand and his team, so basically they are not using political word as well, but definitely politics is part of the narration. And the gender issues are as political as well. But the gender is the middle class. Uh, category. <laughs> you know, every uh, middle class researcher would like to talk about gender. It is a fact. So, if you really equity, politics, and uh, denial, discrimination, these terms and these categories should be brought before kids. I believe that. You know? Yeah, so uh, even the privilege game, for example, uh, had uh, uh, whether you have migrant status, whether you it had all these words, all these ways in which uh, we could help students to articulate these kind of things. So they like I said they come up but more in an interaction than as a because it's also a museum. It's not a newspaper kind of so that not new that, I wouldn't that, say that, 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 that but that, uh, that is not that that's not acceptable for me. It's a living water museum. It's living. So we are living in that reality. So when you are saying it's newspaper you are pushing it away. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is that there is an aesthetic component to the story. So, uh, the aesthetic, because you said that it should be political, otherwise it's just aesthetic. But being a museum, there has to be an aesthetic component. We can't remove the aesthetic Sudharak's component. Photo, from, from Sudharak's photo of a Dhopar Patti not getting water, it's, I mean, there is aesthetics. I, I completely agree. I completely agree. So, even the... Uh, the uh, image of the uh, worm collectors, for example. So that is that is also aesthetically and it has aesthetics to it. So there are these elements, and like he correctly pointed out that the word is not there, but the elements are all there. A, a lot of elements are bring, there. Bring that you know, more emphatically to especially middle class kids. Discrimination, denial, you know, those Agree, things. Agree, because those are uh, things that are not spoken in the schools. Yes. People are not sure how they, teachers are not sure, they are not trained. And that is something which is important to this project, that how do you bring social questions into, these kind of questions into open. So bringing those is a very important part of the project. Because there are, there are um, uh, you know, uh, courses which talk about the science of it, biodiversity, those things are there, but the social question is always harder. So we have spent a lot of focus on how can we bring the social question in. So, yeah, and to some extent that we can. One last question, and we finish with you. Uh, Hello, good evening. Uh, uh, I'm Tirin, a uh, uh, PhD student at uh, Asan Desai Center for Policy Street. I was, you have mentioned about uh, uh, workshop in Jodhpur. So, what was your learning and how do you see uh, in water in India? Uh, as I actually work in uh, Jodhpur uh, with Unnati. So, there is water I came to know as a notion as a Mitha Pani and Khara Pani. So, how I was just uh, uh, like uh, this is one input that if you can like uh, mention in your website or you can work on like the larger of the population in India doesn't understand how khara pani and mitha pani can be separated and uh, how people struggle on the basis of it. So since you are talking about Jodhpur, are you talking about the brackish water in uh, the Japanese? No, uh, no, 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 no,
CPS. Um, I uh, wanted to actually ask, uh, you were showing some photographs on uh, uh, Pandboys and some uh, imagery. Um, I believe that photographs and art kind of open, create a space for discussions and questions. Um, and I think it is somewhere branching out from what Professor Wagner was talking about. Uh, as you, like the two, three photographs that you showed, it had uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar in the background. It was like an Ambedkar chunk or every Pandpoi that even I have seen in Mumbai uh, uh, is usually in the marginalized community and it has a photograph of the leader the people follow. So is there a narrative that you have uh, um, come across or developed uh, in your uh, work where it talks about uh, people and their ideologies and water that is connected to the society, especially from the images that you showed? So uh, in the Pune water, no, but that's an interesting observation. Thanks for that. Uh, but there's an entirely different story about the Mahat Satyagraha. Mm -hmm. That is there, and that is there in the Confluence website. That it's a whole, uh, uh, it's a illustrated story about that. However, its relationship with the with the current countries that was not done in the story. So, so unfortunately, it's still there. It's still the ha. Huh, so okay. And actually, uh, very interestingly, that's exactly what one of the students uh, wrote in the after the privilege game that they played. That uh, the caste system was supposed to be abolished after independence, but it's still there in a different way. That's exactly the words this uh, thirteen-year-old used. So uh, it's interesting to hear. So yeah, thank you Chagi, thank you so much for this very, very interesting And I am going to request to both to please come and this is a little gift from our side, this is a hand woven stone that we give to our people. Got from two organizations, one in Barga and one in Hyderabad that work with cotton hand woven. Thank you.